Today, I'm going to review and test something completely different than I have before on this channel. This is the Olight Marauder Mini that was just recently released. And I'm going to test it the same way that I test headlight upgrades to see how bright it is. Do you think that it can be brighter than a car headlight? Let's find out. Hello everyone and welcome to Car Light Reviews. I normally perform consistent automotive light tests to help you make the best purchase decision, enjoy your car better, and save you money, but this time let's do something a little different. This is the Olight Marauder Mini. Now Olight is a company that's been around since 2007, and while they don't make car lights, they do make high quality flashlights, weapon lights, outdoor and camping lights, and everyday carry gear. I think it's important to note that they also do quite a bit of charity assistance, which I think is pretty cool. And I've known about Olight for a long time. You might also be familiar with them. They saw this channel and reached out to me and asked me if I'd be interested in checking out their newly released Marauder Mini flashlight. Now at first I declined because I didn't think it would fit in with the normal LED headlight reviews and tests that I do on this channel. But then I realized a lot of you might be like me. You like to have bright lighting not only in your car, but in your hand when not in your car. So I decided to check this out and thought some of you might be interested as well. Now I'm going to do this just like I do my LED headlight review and test videos. I'll do an unboxing, go over the published specifications and cover some of the features, and then I'll charge it up and I'll do a Lux test. Again, just like I do my LED headlight videos. I'd like to see how close it is to a headlight in terms of brightness. At least, that's how I'm tying it into this channel's main theme, anyway. Okay, let's open up the box and take a look. Thank you for being part of our Olight family. Your support is why we do this. Enjoy. That's kind of cool. It has some introductory instructions here. How to remove the protective film on the lens, as well as get the battery ready for charging, and how to charge it. We'll do that in a little bit. I'll get to this in a second. Okay, got a holster case, got the charging cable, got a lanyard, got the user manual, and some important warnings, cool, and of course, thank you. Pretty cool, nice packaging, good job Olight. Now, let's take a look at the main unit here. Okay, let's talk about the published specifications of this guy. The body is a 6061T6 aluminum alloy. It has an adjustable output range of 200 to 7,000 lumens. It has a maximum runtime of 43 and a half hours and a throw of 600 meters over a third of a mile. Heat is regulated by an internal thermal sensor that automatically reduces the light to keep the unit temperature below 122 degrees Fahrenheit or 50 degrees Celsius over long-term use, and that's to prevent it from overheating. It is powered by a custom 6500 milliamp an hour 3.7 volt 32650 rechargeable lithium battery, which is included. It is IPX8 waterproof rated, meaning it can be submerged in water for one meter for 30 minutes and still work just fine. And it it does have 1.5 meter drop impact resistance with a five year warranty. And it is available in black as shown here, but also in orange or midnight blue. And this is just released. And the retail price for this is $199.99, but Olight tells me that there is a 30% Black Friday sale for 2022, which knocks $60 off this little beast, making it $139.99. However, I don't know how long that sale will last. So now here's my observations. The size is pretty compact for a powerful light like this. It's a little over five inches in length, the head diameter of just over two and a half inches, and a body diameter of just under one and three quarters of an inch. Let's talk about the feel of this in my hand. I don't have the biggest hands in the world and it fits my hands pretty nicely, but even a bigger hand would probably have no problems keeping a good grip on this. It has a good heft to it. It weighs uh, just under one pound and one ounce. I weighed it, but it has pretty good balance and it feels extremely solid. It feels like it's actually solid aluminum because it's so well built and put together. There's nothing rattling. There's nothing feeling loose. There's nothing feeling inconsistent or, or, uh, or, or just something 
that was slapped together. It does have this silicone wrap right here around most of the body. It's got the logo there plus the specs there and it feels good. It's got these gentle finger grooves. I don't know if you could see them right along there. It does help when you're when you're putting a good grip on it. It does have this recessed lanyard hole here and it has this rotary control as well as the mode toggle switch and uh, the battery indicator here and the output level indicator here. And I'm gonna get to all these in just a little bit and show you how they work. It does have some fins right here that kind of assist in cooling. And you see this warning right here that this does get pretty hot. And I'm gonna show you how hot it gets in a little bit. So moving up to the output end of this guy, it does have this not overly aggressive, but still obvious strike bezel that's anodized blue really nicely to match the rotary control. And here it does have one large converging lens and it's surrounded by nine TIR lenses and of the nine one is red one is green and one is blue and I've been a fan of TIR optics ever since diode dynamics started using it in their off-road lighting and you charge it magnetically using Olight's MCC3 magnetic charging cable just like you would your phone just like that and as you can see that when it's powered up, it's green right there. You might be able to see it. Let me turn off the light, the overhead light here. There we go. Now you can see it. It's green. And then when you're charging it, it's red. And when it's fully charged, it goes back to green. Speaking of which, I'm going to charge this up. And I'm going to show you how all of this works. Okay, as you can see, it's all charged up. What I want to show you now is how the rotary control switch works. I think it's kind of neat. You use it to turn the light on and off, but also increase or decrease the output levels. It's pretty well designed. So to turn it on, you got to rotate it 90 degrees in either direction, and then just press click to turn it on. And then you press to turn it off, and then on and then off again. But it does have a very special safety feature in it. If you leave it off for around 10 seconds or so, give or take, you've got to do it all over again. You got to rotate the knob 90 degrees in either direction and then press click to turn it on again. Like for example, it's been about 10 seconds and if I press, it doesn't come on. You got to rotate it and then press it on. And this is a safety mechanism. And I think it's pretty smart because as I mentioned, it gets hot and I'm going to show you how hot it gets later on in this review. But you definitely don't want this thing to turn on accidentally if it's in a backpack or a glove box with papers or near anything flammable. And when it's on, you can see right there, rotate it down a little bit, the battery output level shows the status of it, how, how strong your charge is. It's a little hard to see. I did notice that. Let me turn the light back off here again. There, now you can see it just fine. So once it's on, you rotate this to increase or decrease the output through seven levels. And if you hit the maximum or the minimum, it has a gentle vibration Kind of like a cell phone to let you know that you hit the limit, which is surprisingly useful. And you can see the level there. So the rotary control increases or decreases the output in any mode. The flood, the spot, or even the red and green blue colors. Let's talk about that. If you're in any mode and you press and hold the rotary control, it cycles through the red, green, and the blue LEDs, and then back to the mode that you were in. And of course, the red, green, and blue LED lights can be controlled by the rotary dial. And when you have them selected, you can kind of see right there in this uh, bright light that I've got, you can see that there's the red is lit up, but also it lights up in the color that you've got selected green. And if you can see it blue, and then back to white again, it does show up there. Again, hard to see with the lighting that we have here, but in the dark, you'd be able to see it just fine. And why would you need red, green, and blue? Uh, usually for preserving night vision, red can also, of course, be used for emergency signaling, like if you broke down at the side of the road in your car or something along those lines. Um, but also green and blue is said to be pretty good for uh, tracking fish in wildlife if you're hunting in the dark. So they're, they're pretty useful to some people, but otherwise, they're just kind of fun. And then double-clicking jumps it to level 7, or also known as turbo mode.
And then when in flood, like I am now, triple clicking goes into strobe. And speaking of mode, this toggle right here is what changes the modes. Down right now is in flood mode or max area illumination. Let me turn that down a little bit so it's not blowing out my camera. And then up is spotlight mode. You want maximum distance, that's what you use. So now you got a complete overview of this cool little light. I want to know how something like this compares to an LED car light. And I'm going to use the same lux meter that I use for my LED headlight upgrade tests. But of course, I won't be using a car projector or reflector housings to test. But let's have a look. When I do car light testing on this channel, I use an H11 halogen bulb as a baseline with a projector headlight from a 2017 Toyota Camry, which is the most common OEM projector headlight on the U.S. market. And that results in 725 lux at 20 feet here in my test environment. Now the brightest projector LED headlight upgrade that I've tested so far on this channel in that same projector is the Hikari 2023 Titan Nova, which is 2,220 initial lux. And then after 27 minutes of runtime, it loses about 15% of that output and retains 1,887 lux. So let's see how the Marauder Mini compares to that. And this is just for fun. So on the spot setting, the lowest is around 200 lux. Let's start cranking it up to the high. 4,200 lux. So that's about 2,000 lux brighter than the brightest LED headlight I've tested. Let's check out the flood. So the flood setting on low is pretty dim, it's at 20. But the highest is 1,180. But that's doing what the flood should do. It spreads the light over a large area, and you can see it covers quite a bit. So the spot is really pretty bright compared to a car headlight, and by quite a bit. Okay, I wanna see what this looks like in my backyard. Okay, so this is my backyard, and, and you can see my fence and then beyond that, the chairs around my fire pit. And then beyond that, the woods behind my house. And I'm showing this to you during the day so you can kind of get an idea of what things look like. Because I'm going to wait for it to get dark. And then I'm going to come back out. And I'm going to see how everything looks when I shine the Marauder Mini on it. All right, here we go. We're going to start with the spot setting on low. And then I'm going to start increasing it to high. Now, I don't want you to consider this as actual output. Use the data that I provided earlier because my conditions of this view can differ drastically from your conditions. Ambient light, moonlight, fog, moisture in the air. But this is just to give you an example of what it could look like. And you can see it does the job and very well. I mean, look at how I can see everything I point this flashlight at. But now let's check out the flood. Here's the flood on low, and I'm gonna start increasing it to high. And holy shit, it's like the sun just came out. And this is the Mini at 7,000 lumens. There's a big brother to this, the Marauder 2 at 14,000 lumens, and an even bigger brother to that, the Marauder X9R at 25,000 lumens. Can you imagine over three and a half times more light output than this? Let's turn on the red, green, and blue. Here's red. Here's green. And here's blue, all at their brightest. This is just an amazing little flashlight. Okay, let's go back inside, and we're going to use my FLIR thermal camera to see how the Marauder Mini manages heat. Here I'm going to show you a time lapse of the spotlight function using my FLIR thermal camera. Right around the 8 minute mark, it levels off at around 104 degrees Fahrenheit or 40 degrees Celsius. And now I'm going to show you a time lapse of the floodlight function with my FLIR thermal camera. At around the 4 minute mark, it levels off at around 113 degrees Fahrenheit or 45 degrees Celsius. So I tested it in the collar. It is hot to the touch, but it didn't actually burn you. But if it's been running for a long time and you do grab it, it's going to get your attention. So just, again, heed that warning. And when I was doing this test, you could actually hear the thermal sensor clicking 
doing its job by regulating the heat. I mean, if you run this thing for around 30 minutes straight on the highest floodlight setting, it does lose about 26% of the total light output, according to the testing that I did. But are you going to run it that long continuously? Well, maybe. And if you do, it's still crazy bright. I think overall, this is just an amazing little flashlight. And you need to see it in person to understand how much power it really packs for its size. Now this is my very first Olight flashlight, but it will certainly not be my last. I really like this light, and just a few years ago, this sort of light output was simply not achievable in this small form factor at this price with these features. And I think this is why I love LED technology, not just for car applications, but it has a whole lot more. It has intuitive controls, it has a cool charging mechanism, it has a good warranty, it has nice packaging if you like that sort of thing, and for the output and the features, the price is right, especially right now for Black Friday 2022, I'd say get in on that deal while you can. It's small enough to fit in your glove box or center console, and if you're worried about maybe a hassle of it having to, you having to go through rotating the knob and then clicking the button if you've turned it off for 10 seconds when you want to turn it back on. After you do it a few times, it's really not a big deal. It's pretty easy and it becomes second nature, so it's not a big deal. Now, I do wish that these indicators were a bit brighter. In my testing here in the light that, you, that I have above my camera like this, they are hard to see. You saw I had to turn the lights off so you could see them. But in the dark, where you're most likely going to be using this, they do show up just fine, as you can see. And also, I'm not sure why there is no strobe in the spotlight mode, but there is in the flood mode. But I'm sure there's a reason. So let's answer the original question. Is this light as bright as a car headlight? Well, I'm going to tell you, yes, absolutely. This little rechargeable handheld light is indeed as bright as some of the aftermarket LED headlights that I've tested on this channel. Now, I'm in no way saying that you should actually use one of these for a car headlight, but it sure is impressive. Links to where you can get yours are in the description, and as I mentioned, this is just released. Retail price $199.99, but Olight says that they've got a Black Friday sale going on and a bunch of Black Friday specials going on, and the price of this, $60 off, $139.99. Hit the link in the description and get yourself one of these. Now, as I mentioned, this video is indeed a bit different from my normal car light videos that I make on this channel, but a little variety is always fun. So if you like this one, or you're new here and just want to see more car light reviews and Lux testing like I did with this Marauder Mini, well, click on the thumbs up, click on the thanks icon to directly support this channel, and subscribe to this channel, and hit the bell if you haven't already. And if you're normally here for my usual car light review and test videos, what do you think of this one? What do you think of this video? A little bit of different, uh, a little bit of variety from what I normally do. Let me know in the comments if you want me to do more reviews on things like this once in a while for variety. Thanks everybody for watching this one. It was fun to do. And I will be back to helping you find the right car lighting upgrades for your needs so you can enjoy your car more and save you some money, of course. Now, normally, here is where I would say to keep your headlights aimed, to drive safely, responsibly, and respectfully. But in this video, I will say, do not shine this in someone's eyes or they may decide to blacken yours. Have fun and happy holidays.